Mount Everest. Earth's highest mountain. Most recently measured at just over 29,000 feet high and growing every day. Its summit is so high, it penetrates into the stratosphere, where it's constantly exposed to 100 mile an hour jet stream winds. But compared with some of its neighbors, Everest is just barely keeping ahead of the competition. Nepal is home to eight of the world's 10 tallest mountains. All of them towering well over 8,000 meters. A cutoff mountaineers usually referred to as the death zone. The Himalayas are one of the youngest mountain ranges on the planet. They stretch over 1,400 miles across Central Asia and are the result of an ongoing collision between the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates, leading to the Himalayas rising by about five millimeters per year. The name Himalaya is Sanskrit for abode of snow. Along with the surrounding mountain ranges of Central Asia, the Himalayas store more snow and ice than anywhere else on Earth outside of the poles. They are the source of 10 major rivers in Central Asia, providing fresh water food and energy to more than a quarter of the world's population. Kathmandu is the capital city of Nepal and the largest city in the Himalayas. It is the seat of the government of the Nepalese Republic, established in 2008 and home to over a million people. For centuries, Kathmandu has been the center of Nepal's history, art, culture, and economy. Nestled at the very heart of an ancient trade route between India and Tibet, Kathmandu quickly became a melting pot between the region's numerous cultures and traditions. Buddhism is the dominant religion of the thinly populated northern areas of Nepal. However, they compose a small minority of the country's population, a majority of whom identify as Hindu. Despite this, Buddhist influences are utterly pervasive in most aspects of Nepali culture. To an extent, that Buddhist and Hindu temples are often shared places of worship for people of both faiths. Nowhere is this more evident than at Swayumbhunath. Although the site was originally constructed as a traditional Buddhist stupa, it is also revered by Hindus.
A stupa is a mound-like structure that typically houses a Buddhist relic, like the remains of a monk or a nun. There is a large pair of eyes on each of the four sides of the stupa, which represent wisdom and compassion. Between the two eyes, in the place of a nose, is the Nepali number one, representing the unity of all things in existence. The forest covering the hill is filled with families of monkeys earning it the nickname, the Monkey Temple. In traditional Himalayan culture, prayer flags are used to promote peace, compassion, strength, and wisdom. Each hue represents a different natural element and the flags are always arranged in a specific order from left to right, blue, white, red, green, yellow. It is believed by hanging the flags in high places, the wind will carry the blessing to all beings. Just as life is constantly renewing itself, the people of the Himalayas renew their hopes for the world by continually mounting new flags alongside the old. Bodhanath is the largest stupa in Nepal and one of the largest in the entire world. Constructed on an ancient trade route from Tibet to the Kathmandu Valley, it towers over a hundred feet high. In many religious traditions of the Indian subcontinent, walking in a circle around a religious structure has been an important ritual and devotional practice since the earliest times. It's meant to imbibe the practitioner with the energy of the holy place. The prayer wheel is thought to have first been developed in Tibet and China around the 4th century BC. It is believed they were first designed to allow the largely illiterate populations of the Himalayas to practice their faith without having to read. Spinning the wheel is thought to have the same effect as orally reciting the prayers. Traditionally, a mantra is written in Tibetan on the outside of the wheel. It is most commonly the sacred mantra, Om Mane Padme Om. meaning literally, praise to the jewel of the lotus. Though only six short syllables, this mantra is seen as the condensed form of all Buddhist teachings. In centuries past, the area of present-day Nepal was dominated 
by various clans and small independent kingdoms. From one of these kingdoms, a prince was born, who later renounced his status completely to pursue the path of enlightenment. Today, he is revered as the founder of the world religion of Buddhism and worshipped by most Buddhist schools as an enlightened being who transcended the cycle of rebirth. In the centuries following his death, Nepal came to be established as a land of spirituality and refuge, playing an extremely important role in transmitting Buddhism to East Asia. The Buddha did not appoint a successor or specify any rules regarding monastic life. Individual monasteries are expected to make decisions collectively through regular gatherings of the community. Male novices may ordain at a very young age, but generally no younger than eight. After their daily morning prayer and meditation, the boys enjoy recess. Buddhist monks and nuns are first and foremost expected to provide a living example to the community, living an austere life focused on the study of Buddhist doctrine, meditation, and the observance of good moral character. It's time for lunch. A traditional Buddhist diet is strictly vegetarian. Historically, one member of the community would be appointed the duty of being the head cook and supplying meals that paid respect to Buddhist ideals. Often working on a tight budget, the monastery cook would have to make the most of whatever ingredients were available. As a result, across the wide Buddhist world, many regional styles of cooking developed. Unlike other schools of Buddhism that are strictly vegetarian, sometimes Tibetan Buddhist monks eat meat as a concession to the harsh climactic conditions that make a plant-based diet largely unfeasible. After lunch, the monks are expected to refrain from eating until noon the next day in order to practice self-discipline. Lukla is a small town in the Khumbu Valley region of Nepal. Situated at nearly 10,000 feet above sea level, it is a popular first stop for climbers en route to Mount Everest to arrive. It's only accessible to the outside world via a single airstrip, Tenzig Hillary Airport, nicknamed the most dangerous airport in the world.
throughout its history, its incredibly short and steep runway, often compounded by high winds and low visibility, has resulted in several fatal accidents. As the only airport in nearly a hundred miles, Lukla serves as a vital connection point for supply and rescue helicopters. Due to the incredibly rugged terrain and total lack of any modern paved roads, helicopters remain the only way to quickly transport supplies in the region, as well as serving as a last hope for anyone involved in a climbing accident. For centuries, the people of the Himalayas lived a relatively isolated existence. Surviving mostly as sustenance farmers and traders, using yak caravans to transport salt, wool, and rice through the dangerous mountain passes. With the arrival of foreign explorers in the area, it quickly became a much more profitable career to assist mountain climbers as either guides or gear porters. A successful mountain guide can make almost 10 times the average annual Nepali income. Nevertheless, it is extremely dangerous and the guides risk their lives on every expedition. Many of the people of the Himalayas today practice one of the world's oldest schools of Buddhism. It incorporates many local shamanic beliefs passed down through the generations, woven into the fabric of ritual life. Every mountain, cave, and forest is believed to be inhabited by ancestral spirits. After a long journey carrying supplies up the mountain, this horse caravan stops for some much needed water. <laughs> 